they don't come with a with a feeder. So I just put that top feeder in. So this is why it sits a little bit off. It, as you see, usually they're really snug. Yeah. And this one is just that that um, top board is is, is not. But I, I need to feed them, and that's the only way how I figured it out to mm -hmm. feed them. So, so you just mentioned that you really prefer these type of high bodies. Yes, I'm a huge fan of the of the well insulator so this is styrofoam this is a new this is called hive iq this is a new this is a new um company coming out of australia okay and uh, and again see they actually see that there's no ventilation and then i'm a firm believer no ventilation i'm a firm believer of not ventilating uh, all my if you see my ap may hives this is basically similar this is also a um uh a styrofoam core with a plastic ceiling but as you see all of my hives are closed for ventilation I don't I don't believe in ventilation because to me it doesn't make sense if you look at uh, at a natural beehive in the woods so you have a big oak tree or whatever where the bees would live and you see one little hole and that's where they go in and out and then you have this colony in there how many ventilation holes there at the top that's right zero right so they have my theory is they have evolved over the millions of years to create a perfect microclimate themselves they're masters in air conditioning their own hive right and the moment that we start to that we start to muck around with it and ventilate it the moment we create problems look at this here this is they actually talk to you so these are these are these top uh, feeders again you can you can feed them without disturbing them so they walk in there but obviously i just filled it up two days ago but if you come really close and look they actually the company put ventilation holes mm -hmm. everywhere yeah. look what the bees are telling me they're propolising everything shut our observation hive they do the same thing they're they gave saying, them all those screens and they're they just saying you know them. what thank you for the assistance with the air conditioning we got that we right. don't need your help What's, and, what are we looking at right here? Uh, this is a data port. So all of my all of my hives are equipped with uh, with cameras that you can see, which actually register each bee coming in and out. And then they also have uh, humidity and temperature sensors inside. And this basically is just a data port that is being sent to my cell phone immediately. So at any time, even when I'm back in Germany, I can see what the temperature and the humidity in hive number nine is. Oh my. So, and that's what the data port does. And this so is the camera right down this here? This is the camera, yep. And so the camera basically is a, is a nice monitoring tool to obviously see what's going on in the landing board. How many bees are coming, how many bees are going, uh, what the time of the day, and so, at the end of the day, you have a pattern of activity. And actually, surprisingly enough, it looks very much similar to a human EKG. Okay. So it has a similar wave. Ebbs and flows. Exactly. So it has then, so in the morning, they get started. And the first ones that come out that have never been outside the hive, they do the orientation flight. They come out, they spend a little bit of time in front of the hive. So okay. that's that first little peak. And then the foragers come out. So you have this huge peak and then they come back at the end of the day. So you have this normal pattern and it should repeat every day the same way. And, um, and so I use that uh, to illustrate my students. This is kind of like the EKG of that living organism here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and if the colony is weak, you have a lack of, of activity, right? So yeah. I can actually, with the data, I can tell remotely which of the hives we need to focus on, which of the hives is maybe broodless. Because if it's broodless, it's missing that initial morning peak. Mm -hmm. And so I can immediately say, we need to inspect the hive number five immediately. Yeah. Because there's a lack of the early foragers coming out doing the orientation flight. Can I ask a question about, sure. so you like, you like this company? But I, I, I don't know because I just got those two hives right now and I told the CEO of the company that I'm going to share my data. Yeah. They are also equipped with the humidity and temperature sensors. And so far, what, what I can tell from, from the data, and we can take a look at it right here, uh, it's actually sub, um, uh, performing really, really well. I'm very excited. But to be honest, I didn't expect that much of a difference because the only difference, I think, between these APMA ones and these high IQ ones is that plastic coating on the inside. But, right. but they all have that styrofoam core. So if we look at the data now from, from one of them, hmm. so the last three days, see, this is the brood temperature. And this is, this is supposed to be the optimal. So the, green, the, the gray zone, the optimal uh -huh. and it's beautiful 
yep. it's just right in there and the bottom is the humidity so I would actually see like to see the humidity a little bit higher but I like to see the humidity above 80% okay um, the reason for this is um, that actually it has been shown that Varroa can't multiply if the humidity is over 80% really? how about that I've not heard that one yes, yet. Yes, there's a lot of data out there. And so what do we do with the wooden hives and everything? And we actually, in our own interest, I th think we want to keep the humidity low because that makes better honey or whatever. Right. Because right. you want to get the humidity. But we are creating this beautiful breeding environment for Varroa. Right. And so the more I think about it, you know, like the, that's how I came to the so Here, there's the other hive. So. The brood nest is a little bit further down, so it's a little bit irregular, but what I like is the humidity is at 80%. Okay. I really like that. Now let me ask you another question about, so this is insulated. Yes. If we had used just woodenware, yep. would you still need to not worry about, would you? Would your theory support that you wouldn't need ventilation and on a hot day? It's a, it's a, it's a complicated project, so yes, I, I'm, I'm totally against ventilation. Uh -huh. But what you have to fight, you obviously your enemy is condensation. Right. Right? So you gotta figure out a way how to get rid of condensation. And they're usually really good. So what I do for example in the winter time and um, and I got into the winter with nine of these colonies and okay. came out with nine. So I didn't lose any of them, which was amazing actually. And I yeah. I attribute a lot to the to the hives, not to me being a great beekeeper. But what I did is I basically with these hives, I'll just quickly show you. So you have this setting right now um, where it says actually here the arrow is candy and this is syrup, right? Yep. And so if you see, if you feed syrup, the wall goes completely down. If I take this out, and I don't know like how angry they are, I can try. If I take this out, you see that the candy is actually a short wall and then they can walk out here and then they can eat the candy. So right now the syrup goes all the way to the bottom so they can only drink. In yep. the winter I turn it around and fill all of this up with granulated sugar. Right. So it does two things. It allows the bees to come up to eat the granulated sugar if they want it. But also because the granulated sugar is hygroscopic, it attracts all the moisture, okay. binds the moisture, creates a, and then a creates cake. candy in itself. Yeah. So And it's not having condensation. And so, but again, I, I I let them, um, I try, and that, this is my background because I deal with only exotic animals, right? I don't deal with dogs and cats here. Yeah. And what I always teach to my students when you have, a, when you have an exotic animal, like a snake, like a parrot, or like a bee, you always have to read up how does that snake, how does that parrot, how does that bee like to live in the nature? Because nature's got it figured out. Yeah. So try to mimic, try to mimic nature as close as possible. Yeah. And this is when it dawned on me. It's like, wait a second, why are we ventilating? Why are we ventilating? Because that is very unnatural. Yeah. And um, and so and so this is why I, I try to mimic. And this is the beauty of these hives, these well insulated hives. They have an R value of about seven, I think, which is a thermal insulation um, uh, value. And an R value of seven mimics basically kind of like a 10 inch oak. Yeah. You know, so basically um, being insulated that well in the summer helps you to keep the heat out. Yep. And being insulated obviously that well in the winter keeps the heat, helps to keep the heat in. And yes, I think these hives are a little bit more expensive than the regular hives, but if you're in the business of selling your honey, these girls are going to spend significantly less time trying to keep it warm, right? Yeah. So if, if it takes whatever, 2,000 heater bees, you know, maybe it only takes 200 heater bees. So all that energy, they leave that honey alone for me to harvest in some way. So this is why I'm a huge fan of these really well insulated hives. So this is why I don't see this as an expense. The increase, the increased cost is not an, in it's an investment. I just invested in a better system. Yeah. And if I if I get 10 pounds of honey at the end, uh, I have that money back. Also, like like I said, I really think that all of my bees survive because of that management system. Right. And if I would have lost five of them, and then I buy five nukes, right, that's close to a thousand dollars right there in the next spring. Yeah. So again, this is why, not, and that's a 200 dollar investment that that really um, bode well for it. 
And on top of all that, you have a little bit of, is that a top bar or a long That is a top bar hive, that's right. <laughs> so I have one of this too, to just show my students that there's different forms of beekeeping. And we can, this is actually a hive that is interesting. This is a colony that moved in. This was sitting there empty. And then one day I noticed that oh. there's massive, massive activity going in. It sure is. And they <laughs> liked it. They liked it so much that they moved right into. Um, and you know, well, it looks like it's got a few bees in it. It's got a few bees, all right. <laughs> They're doing really well. So this is just basically, I want to show the students, there's more than one ways to keep bees. Yep. Yeah. Because if they go to somebody's backyard and they see this for the first time, now they can say, oh no, we had that at the vet school too. Well, you've got some substantial solar panels here. Is that yep. what's running all these this electronics? This is to run the cameras, yep. Yeah. So that's like microprocessors and stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, so because I'm in the middle of nowhere here. I yeah. need to be. Yeah, we are. I was. I'm surprised we had to walk out here. And you see the scales. You see, all of my hives are sitting on scales too. Because uh -huh. again, this is what I teach my students. It's like, what is the first thing you do with a dog or a cat, or what is the first thing your doctor does when you go to the office? Step on the scale. Yeah. Right. And so it's the whole thing because I can literally tell you, I could be in Germany and know exactly if the honey flow, if the nectar flow, is still happening in Georgia or not because. Because the colony grows, grows, grows in weight, and then suddenly if the nectar flow stops, yeah. the whole colony is not... So again, does this cost money? Yes, absolutely, but I know exactly when to harvest yep. at the right time. It's not a gamble anymore, so that saves me a lot of honey right there that I can sell and, create, you know, okay. and keep the program alive. I'm being a little nosy. Uh, yeah. I'm always interested in the technical things what's this gadget right here yeah this is also this this corresponds to the uh, to the uh, humidity and temperature sensors and that has the oh. little cell phone chip in it uh -huh. that sends the data to me and that one we saw that's for the cameras but okay. this one does the same thing for the for the humidity and all and right is the cooler for the students <laughs> <laughs> that is actually that is our syrup like i said i just oh, filled syrup. up okay i filled up a couple yesterday and then i just leave it out here okay yeah, but as you see, I don't really, I don't really do much with the, yeah. with the wooden hives. So because, like yeah. I said, I think, I think it's not doing them justice enough. Well, I must say the people at the bee lab are impressed with you, so you must have something going on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's 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 one of those pet peeves of mine, the microclimate, and like I said, my background as an exotic animal vet, to to try to figure out how can we keep animals in captivity. Uh, in a most appropriate way. Well, the rain has just ended and it is humid out here. I don't know what the humidity is, but I'm I'm just getting wet just standing yep, here. It's definitely yeah. really a hot one today. Yeah. Wow, this is uh, very nice, very nice. And a very nice location too. Yeah, there's a pond down there so they have access to fresh water all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a little bait hive out there that in case somebody wants to swarm, so I have that one sitting there. How often do you catch a swarm over there? To be honest, I have uh, I uh, I haven't had too much swarming because of that all electric uh, of that monitoring. Oh, okay. I can tell when stuff is about to happen, and then I just uh, I'm just proactive about it. Uh, but like I said, that topper hive was a wild swarm that came. Yeah. Uh, but the but cameras, because the cameras tell me each swarm went, and because if there's more than 100 bees per second uh -huh. leaving the hive, it triggers an alarm and it sends an alarm uh -huh. to my cell phone. So I know exactly which which hive swarmed, and then I can come, because usually they obviously set up a bee walk swarm fairly close, and I can harvest it. So, but I haven't, I really haven't had much problems with swarming this year, so. Well, you know, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, because they have a swarm in a tree in the bee yard, it came from one of their colonies, yeah. but what they don't know is that swarms are highly attracted to other apiaries. Exactly. And this is why I was surprised that the wild swarm came in here and this empty bar, because these were operational, uh -huh. and so then they thought, oh, that must be a good, that must be a good place to be, and they, <laughs> and they moved right in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, this yeah. is all very impressive, as is this whole school. That's a big building you're in over there. Yep. Um, yep. I've seen colleges that are smaller than that building. <laughs> so, uh, how many? Do you know how many students are at this university? It was well, about at, the, 50, at UGA 000. in total, I think it's yeah. like 30, 35, somewhere around 30,000. And then our college, uh, we have now 150 students per class, and there's mm. four years of them. Okay, well, the yeah. campus is absolutely massive. Yes. You know, with the bee lab, we've been around to all their bee yards at the 
I don't even know what all those places are we go to. They're all ag, yep. you know, mm -hmm. agricultural type things. So very impressive. And well, you can also see they've they've named the the front of the colony there. Yeah, they're all like spice. They're spice theme. Uh oh, they named the, spice. They named their colonies. Yep, I'm this not. This is ginger <laughs> spice. You got ginger spice over here. Scary spice. Okay. Sporty spice. All right. Yeah, the student, I let the students name the colonies. So. All right, all very impressive. Thank yeah. you once again. The whole school is impressive. I'm really glad I came. Okay. I think Jesse's having a good time too.